because that's how life works out. Write in the name of love because Jesus said to love first. I spit fury and feel pain so you can call me love hurts or Michelle Antoinette, the name I was given at birth. I travel backwards, reversing life blurs. God spoke my life and I pray he won't take backwards. Not now. Not now, you see, I'm, I'm just realizing my purpose. I've memorized my life and I'm just beginning to rehearse it so I perform this thing perfect. Finally, you see, it all began when God took me by the hand and walked with me. He lifted the veil and showed me that if the E came before the V, I'd be staring right in the face of evil. He then grabbed me by the tail, reversed the word, returned me to the date of my birth and told me to live. He said, I gave you the ultimate gift. Man called you premature, but I scheduled your arrival. Two months early, barely breathing, I dictated your survival. Took your breath, wrapped your throat with a core first name umbilical because I knew from the womb you were a fighter. Told the doctor to open your mother and lift you up whole from inside her so you could come into the world swinging. No longer entangled, I could see my guardian angel in her human form. The woman whose spirit covered the fruit of her womb from death because as I learned nine years later, I was the last child she had left to have a bear. But God didn't stop there. He took me from every decision to every time my life was spared. From the first moment I picked up a pen on Eagle's momentum swiftly and wrote the first poems I'd ever shared. And the strength of that majestic bird has also taken me everywhere from the Native American stranger who told me I was born to be a leader to the day I lost my mind, looked my mother in her eye and told her I didn't need her to the first time I took a flight around the track to when I realized I've been writing for everyone but no one has ever written back and that my hair is kinky and I'm less than American but 100% black. Mm. Oh <laughs> but, but God whispered in my ear and said there's nothing wrong with that, I'm going back, I'm going back. I'm going back, I'm going back through weed smoke and letting smack on empty Alize bottles to all those getting hired during education, becoming my role models and giving it to me bluntly. And even further back to my father chose alcohol over his family. Mm. Voluntarily, I was sitting in counseling session after session at the age of 11 with other kids just like me, children of alcoholic parents. That's when it became apparent that even the greatest man to ever live could fall. Crushed by his habit, I watched him withdraw and re-up, withdraw and re-up, wretch up his insides in the toilet and flush away his soul. His eyes no longer sparkled. He was half the man he once was, deteriorating into dust. The other half might as well have been biodegradable mush that I wish would melt and assimilate with the earth's crust because my father was dead to me. And my mother, she said, I've been here before, so I'm a double entity and he destroyed both of us. Wise beyond my years, I spiraled down in silent tears until God spoke to me and said that he was his and my father was resurrected. Reconnected to his soul. Once pieces of a man, he has now made whole, and now I'm 30 years old. And I'm wondering what all of this says about me. Maybe just maybe I've been focusing on tomorrow so sharply that yesterday it's harpooning me, and everything that God has revealed is my destiny, and the only thing constant day to day is his love for me. So my purpose must be to release myself from all this guilt and pain, listen to other poets inspire and do the same, stand on my words and appear to levitate on this stage, and remember that I love to do this, so display it in my name. I write in the name of love because that's how life works. I write in the name of love because Jesus said to love first. I spit fury and feel pain so you can call me love hurts or Michelle Antoinette the name I was given at birth. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all very, very, very much. So, <laughs> so, a couple of things. Couple of couple of things. Um, number one. Uh, a little, little bit more about me. Um, I've worked, I graduated from Coppin State University, then college, now university, in 2003. I have worked with at-risk youth in alternative settings for the last eight years. Um, it is a passion of mine. I graduated with a criminal justice degree and I chose to work with youth who need me. Um, and it is a pleasure to have been invited to be here to the, in this school at this time. But there are a couple of things. We are going to do a workshop. You know, I'm not just going to perform. So it's going to be fun, though. I'm going to have some fun. But I'm going to need y'all's attention. That's cool? Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. I appreciate you. Um, 
Uh, maybe I'll do another poem. Can I do another poem? Yeah. Okay. You could do 50. <laughs> <laughs> Miss like Nataki told me that um, I, I needed, you know, that you guys wanted to see me perform, so I do a little more poetry than I usually do when I do a workshop. Um, how many of y'all like hip hop? Yeah? Good. That's good. Anybody listen to like older hip hop as opposed to like just today's hip hop? What y'all call hip hop? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I had to slide that. Um, what old? You know, like I guess what we listen to now is old school hip hop. Um, but being a, a child born in the '80s, uh, uh, you know, the hip hop generation is like what I know. It grew up with me. You know what I'm saying? So um, one thing that people don't usually they don't understand the correlation or they try to make a correlation but can't fully grasp the correlation between poetry and rap or poetry and because poetry is a part of the hip-hop culture the spoken word is a part of the hip-hop culture but it's a little different from rap why is that rap you're, it's written to bars to the music you know one two three four is one bar hunt so it's written to the bars poetry is usually written through the, the music like to the melody as opposed to trying to fall on the beat right um, thank you. Um, so um, I wrote this piece because I was actually asked in college to do um, to do a poem. The, the whole fashion show's theme was hip hop, but I found that it has it has uh, found truth as the years have, have gone on. So this is something I wrote. Um, it's called I don't even know what it's called. So I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> I'll name everything. Just go in. Tick tock and the beat drops. Tick tock and the beat drops. Like rock, rock, planet rock. See, spoken word is hip hop, like rap when the beat drops. Forms of poetry we both be, cause hip hop, my soul is the. In the beginning, boasting complacent, I write with rockin' and sellers, underground basement sounds. Moving generation X crowds on the low. See, Curtis Blow and Nikki Giovanni both speak to me, cause frequently we forget there was a beginning to what seems to have no ending. Yes, hip hop is a friend to me. Comfort like my pen, I'm free when the beat drops. We're parading hip hop's clothes like those in fashion shows, like cool Herc and Linda Joy Burke, we are setting a new precedent, laying a foundation of cement, cause this be the beatbox era, 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 this be the beatbox era, 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 this be the beatbox era. <laughs> Break it makes your head spin, but you see much clearer when the beat drops. We follow the affectionate leader, aka Africa, band bottle, rocking bells, wearing Adidas, spitting harder and harder. This is a hip hop culture where gunfights and gang wars are taking the platforms, where breakdancing be the battle and graffiti turns the art. This is hip hop's beginning, and now we're doing our part. 40 years later, a revival of what we be in our hearts eternally. Cause when the beat drops, when the beat drops, when the beat drops, when the beat drops, this is hip hop. Yeah. So, uh, it's okay. You, <laughs> it's funny. A lot of people uh, do the snaps. I used to, when I was in college, I actually acquired my name there. Um, I used to do, I was a RA, a, a residence hall assistant, meaning I, I, I worked and ran a floor in the dorms. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we had to do was programming. So I, I decided, because I've been writing poetry since I was 11 years old, that I would do like an open mic as my program. So when we're in there, y'all with me? Yes. Okay, it's okay. Um, so when we were in there at the poetry event, I used to make everybody snap and say love. I just thought it was really funny because it's really cliche. So I, <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. So, but when people saw me on the yard, they would always say love and snap. And one day I was looking for a name for a slam I was in. I was like, I need a poetry name. You know, I need a, I need a name. You know, that was back when we did that a lot. And, <laughs> and uh, my friend was like, well, everybody already calls you love. You might as well just go by love. And since then, the name has grown to me much more than that, like the poem that you first heard me do. But that's kind of where it came from. So when you're doing the snaps, it takes me back to that a little bit. But feel free to just clap your hands, stomp your feet, say, woo, it's all right. Any of that is fine. Anytime before. Yeah. Um, and I'll do this one more piece, and then we're going to get into the workshop. And this is just a little bit about poetry and how I feel about it. And here we go. It's called Symphony. Poetry is like my symphony I'll play it for you if you want to relax with me 
Sit back, sit back, sit back, sit back and let my words set you free. Relax, 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 yeah. Words are my instrument, so let me begin playing. Poem so fluid, harmonic, you're thinking I'm singing humming symphonic. More than monosyllabic, I mouth mountains on topics and build islands for eyelids now open. So ears listen. I find inspiration in the smallest tip pen cause it writes big letters and it wears big feathers. The quill scratches paper like DJ skip records and I needs that. Subtle feedback. Composing my life soundtrack. Classical. Johann Sebastian Bach. Masterful like the days of old. Pinning poetry far from pose but just as potent. One lung be orchestra token, the other conducting airflow so that you know that poetry is like my symphony. I play it for you if you want to relax with me. Give me, give me, give me your energy. So you have an impact on me. Thank you for just listening, embracing history, because it's in the making. See, audience appreciation is life sustaining and it doesn't have to be too many. Maybe just one can feel me and I fulfill my destiny. So you are love for me. So I give love to you equally, pouring out every little bit of energy to let you know this life ain't been no crystal stair for me. Just like it ain't been for you. And you are not alone in this world, we are all going through, so don't worry. Sit back and let every poet in this room play together in tune. Minister to you classically, let us present rhyme to you slanted and purely. Let us present your life with such sureness it mimics audacity, then reconnect you with reality through scripted fantasy, because sometimes we make things up. Then disperse like cloud puffs, leaving you just high enough to know that we flow like oboes in your soul, showing you that words are musical. This session is sound control, so this class I call, well, Classical. Poetry is like my symphony. I play it for you if you want to relax with me. Sit back, sit back, sit back, sit back and let my words set you free. Relax and relax, you relax, you relax, yeah. Thank you.